Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting. And I'll ask you to stand in a second. I'll ask our colleague, Deputy Majority Leader, Lucille McKnight, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd also like to ask tonight for a moment of silence after the Pledge of Allegiance for the young woman, Heather Heyer, who was killed in Charlottesville over this past weekend. And to keep the 19 victims and other people of Charlottesville in our thoughts during this time of unrest and as a result of this cowardly act. So, Honorable McKnight, please be seated. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Services like County Group 101, 
on the Cliff Road in the town. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 306. Authorizing agreement with Total Facility Solutions Inc. regarding electrical construction of the Albany County Town Treatment Center parking garage in Chris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 307. Authorizing agreement with GP Foreign Solutions for Carpenter of the Albany County Family Court Building. Refer that to public works, please. <coughs> 308. We just did 308. Authorizing. Like, no, we just did 307. You read the wrong one. 307. Let's read 307 over again, please. Authorizing an agreement with Peter for the Brothers Contracting Inc. regarding the construction of the Albany County Time Center parking lot in Grassley. We'll send that to public works, please. Thank you.
Those opposed? Resolution passes. 326. Authorizing the county executive to execute a license agreement with Stewart Shops Corp. to continue the use of property at 309 Delaware Avenue, Delmar, New York, and amending the 2017 Oakland County budget. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 327. Authorizing the Department of General Services to accept a grant from Empire State Development for the Time Treatment Center Parking Garage and Grid Secrets Project. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 328. Authorizing the Albany County Executive to enter into a lease agreement with the Albany Capital School Post. Refer that to audit and findings, please. 329. Amending resolution 499 for the 2016 to include the purchase of shades for the common areas of the Albany County Executive. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 330. Authorizing the submission of the grant application to our state office of parks and recreation to start preservation regarding the maintenance of snow wheel trails and holding All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 331. Amendment 2017, all the county legislative budget. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 332. Amendment resolution 518 from 2016 regarding additional funding for the hospitality and housing. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. Prior to current salary information before more than that employment. Refer that to the following <coughs> personnel, please. Yeah. I'd just like to go on record that uh, this went through committee without any conversation and came favorably through committee, and I, I just uh, sort of incredulous that uh, we're not voting on it tonight. And I I think I would, though, like to uh, respect your decision and uh, move forward with it in the future. And I'd like to come in that we can all try to work together to do that because I think it's particularly important to level the playing field for everyone in our community. And I think we should uh, work together to try to continue to do that some more. So I can promise you that, Mr. Can you just please add me as a sponsor? Yes, sir. Me too. Mr. Chair. Does anybody not want to be a sponsor? Well, we did vote on it for everybody's sport. Well, well I, I think yeah. I think yeah. the yeah. reason it's being yeah. sent to the committee is because there was unanimous vote in caucus that there was questions on it, and none of the sponsors were there. So I, mean, I don't. I talked to the sponsor, and I, I believe that we could work this out for any whole point. Yes. So, yes. Mr. Bergdorf. Mr. Chairman, not that I, it's going back to committee. I, yes. I assume it's going to be discussed in committee. Absolutely. I personally would like to decide whether or not I am going to be a sponsor or not a sponsor after I understand what the issues are that are going to be raised in committee. Correct. I don't, so if you, you said before, does anybody not want to be a sponsor? I'd like to postpone that decision on my behalf. Okay. And I think we have plenty of time now. We're going to wait a month on this. Mr. Krause. I'd also like to join Mr. Bergdorf in waiting. Okay. I, I'm not going to put anybody on right now. I think it's, I, I, I think if you're interested, uh, you can get to the uh, office with, between now and next month. Or, or the committee meeting is probably best. Mr. Klein. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am happy to join Ms. Lukakis as the co-prime sponsor of this measure. And then I also do want to note that I look forward to any questions members may have. Nothing has come up in committee in the three times it's been before the law committee. I look forward to working with everyone and moving forward on this because it is very important. And I want to note that I, I thank my colleague, Ms. McKnight, for standing up in honor of the anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which, was, which will be August 18th. But there's another date that we should also acknowledge, April 4th. That was pay equity day. April 4th is the day this year that a woman would have to work into the new year to get paid the same as a man in the last year. It still breaks down to the women making 80% for every dollar that a man makes. We have a piece of legislation that will help address that in the, in the legislature of the state of Massachusetts and the governor, as well as the New York City Council and the Philadelphia City Council have opted to go, to go forward with this legislation. This will help stop the perpetuation of salary inequity. I look forward to my colleagues and moving forward with this. It is important. We should follow the state of Massachusetts and New York City and Philadelphia and take this lead so we can finally begin to address this unacceptable. Yeah. So, no, thank you, Mr. 
this sort of group. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman Board. My question is why just uh, men and women get, uh, can get asked the same question. So one of the questions I would have during the committee review process is why this is a, a wage gap issue as opposed to uh, a protection for both men and women who may, may have that question posed. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Dawson? Yeah, I want to be a co-sponsor. Okay. Thank you. I don't need to very good, Mr. O'Brien. Yeah, I would like to be a sponsor as well. Very good. Mr. Chairman, I have to be a sponsor. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I, I would suggest that why, why doesn't everybody uh, see the clerk after the meeting to, just to make sure we have everybody on there. Thank you. What could I do? until I was ready to sit down at the meeting. Last year was the first year, one out of nine, that there was actually a couple of days, it was presented a couple of days before the meeting, and I congratulate both Mr. Gamalowitz as, as chair of the Audit Finance Committee as well as the chairman for their leadership in doing that. The budget is probably the most important document that we as legislators vote on on an annual basis. It sets the tone for next year as well as the physical constraints that we have to deal with. And we as legislators have a fiduciary responsibility to understand what we are voting on. It is incumbent upon us to do due diligence of all those changes before we vote. In my history on audit and finance, I either abstained from the vote or I voted no on all those changes because I did not get the opportunity to review those changes before I had to vote. Book of Law U provides for a, a two business days, 48 hours of review after the capital, excuse me, not the capital, the budget report is provided before audit and finance meets to vote on those changes. Within those 48 hours, it provides the staffs of uh, both the majority and the minority to go through, do the review, compare it to the discussions that were had when audit and finance met with department heads to make sure that the, the numbers are correct, that we got in there what we wanted to, if there have been any changes, and, and so on and so forth. It just provides that level of review and it allows us a time to ask questions if we are not sure what it means. Again, we have a responsibility. When we vote on that budget, it not only affects all of the department heads, it affects every taxpayer in the county of Albany. We have a responsibility to them. In our discussions in committee, a question arose regarding what happens to subsequent items that happen after the budget report has been provided in that two-day, 48-hour window. The amendment attempts to clarify what would happen. Again, let me give you an example so you know what we're talking about. I have seen in my short history where a department head might get notification of uh, a grant that they applied for that it's actually been approved. 
and that department head would like to get both the revenue side and the expense side in that budget. And I've seen those kind of late minute changes. Those kind of subsequent events are what we're trying to take care of in this situation. So what this amendment does for you is that, number one, there's a subsequent event, subsequent to the publishing of that budget report, that requires a change. The change would then be approved uh, if it's so desired by both the majority leader and the minority leader. It would then be put into the changes. And the important part here, it would not change that 48-hour clock. It would not increment it in any way. It would be included, but because it's a subsequent change, it would have the proper level, level of exposure and vetting that's necessary. It is very, very important in this process that the, we have complete transparency to what is going into that budget. And that is what both this amendment as well as the uh, local volume is trying to accomplish. Now, I mentioned before, last year, it actually was a couple days of review. So the question might come up, well, why should we do this if it's actually being done? We had a similar situation a month or so ago when we voted on the ban the box legislation. When that came up, the box on the county's employment application no longer existed. It already had been taken off. So the question was asked, why would we still need this piece of legislation? And the response was, is that we want to ensure in future years that legislators who come after us understood our intent and then if there is a change it would come before this body in order to be approved so that it just couldn't be a change by a specific individual uh, or a such as a chairman of audit and finance or the chairman of the legislature it would require a vote of the entire legislature the attempt here is to, to have complete transparency allow us the time and the, the ability to ensure that when we vote on a budget, we know what we're voting for and that we're, we are fulfilling our responsibility to the voters and the taxpayers of Albany County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Demolos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise uh, to vote against the amendment. Simply put, we're already doing this. Once the finance committee makes the adjustments to the, to the, to the budget, uh, it's sent to the uh, to our office for review uh, before it gets to the county legislature. It's put in raw form, and then you have a chance to review it. At that point, once it gets put on the agenda, you have a chance to review it completely for at least a week. Uh, in the process even leading up to that, you want to talk about transparency, transparency under Chairman Ward's leadership, our, our finance committee meetings are televised two days after we have them. So you don't even have to wait until we get to the print form. It's available to you right in your living room. Uh, so I would just say that, and then I'll speak later on the, on the local law, uh, but, you know, the, the amendment is something that we're already doing. Transparency is out there. We have been more transparent than ever. And the reason why uh, we might have an issue eight years ago when Mr. Mendick was on it, uh, but we didn't have the, we weren't televising our meetings. Our committee meetings are all televised now. Wide open, everybody can see. And uh, so, I mean, I don't know how more transparent you can get uh, unless you're right there. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Mr. Cross. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would the sponsor of the amendment yield to a question? Sure. Uh, Rich, could you define for me what a material change is? It says uh, the two-day period unless it is a material change. Where is material change defined and what is your idea of material change as opposed to mine or anyone else's? A material change is one that has a, a significant impact on the budget itself. And what, by that I mean if we're talking about 
five or ten or a hundred dollar change, that would not be considered material. If it's a ten thousand dollar change, five thousand dollar change, then that would be considered material. But that's not the five. You're just throwing out a number, whether it's a five or ten thousand. Material materiality is a concept in accounting, and we're dealing with the audit and finance department that is well defined in academia. I don't think material change in budgeting is well defined. It depends upon the size of the budget and what the number is. So I find that vague. I understand what Mr. Mendick is trying to do, and I think you know, he certainly uh, is addressing it. Uh, but I, I think when you have language like this, material change, uh, it's open to anybody's interpretation. And it would depend upon, of course, um, who the leaders are at that time. What might be a material change for Mr. Camisso, Mr. Moriello might not be a material change for someone else. So I, I think that's vague. And I think it's tough for us to make a decision. A budget is a fluid document. Changes are often made right up until the 11th hour. I, like Mr. Mendy, never appreciated getting that information at the last moment. I think it didn't provide those of us who weren't part of the process with enough time to actually debate and comment on it. But I think this language is flawed. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Mr. Berger? I, uh, I got elected in 2015. I came and I watched the first budget process, which was sort of fraught with angst, uh, to say the least. Uh, especially at the end. Uh, last year, I was told it was the first year that the budget was passed unanimously. And it was passed unanimously because there were changes made on the voting of the budget, where if people wanted to vote no, it was a long roll call. And there were changes made because there was a two-day, at least uh, nobody felt like they were being jammed, as both Peter and Rich had indicated had been sort of the, uh, the operation in the past years. So the budget was a success based on bipartisan cooperation. So I think Rich, and rightfully so, put a safety valve in this two-day notice, which says we're going to do everything humanly possible to get everything available in two days, but if there is something of some stature that a majority leader and a minority leader can say, yes, this is important, let's go ahead and make the change. So I'm not sure What's so unclear about that? If something is large and controversial, maybe it doesn't happen and it waits for later in the process during the year. If it is commonsensical, if it makes good sense to everybody involved in the budgetary process, and it's consistent with notice and transparency, then you can go forward. And that's what everybody says they want to do. So I'm not quite sure that the language is deficient. It's based on the goodwill of the majority and the minority. And, uh, and absent that, with two day, days notice, you can do whatever you want so everybody understands what's happening. So I, I'm going to support the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Bendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to, to respond to Krause and Mr. DeWall was, first of all, Mr. Krause's point about what the materiality is. I would venture to guess that when the budget report is being put together, there are a number of changes that might emanate from the department head. And I will bet dollars to donuts. There are decisions made whether they are actually, in my terms, material enough or of enough of consequence that they actually get on the report. For example, if there is a $100 addition error somewhere, 
I'm not sure that that's ever going to make the report because people would say, it doesn't really matter, it's not significant. And I think those kind of decisions make all, well, all the, are made all the time. As well as, again, we would have both the minority leader and the majority leader being that safety valve, as Mr. Bergdorf was talking about, if a item comes through that it lacks that level of materiality, that it's just you know, probably not worth it. But clearly, those two gentlemen, or the minority and the, and the majority leader uh, of the future, will have the ability and the reasonability to make those decisions. And to Mr. Damalowitz's point, I appreciate the fact that last year there was time to review. That was the first time in my knowledge that that had taken place. But I'm not worried about what's going to happen this year. I'm not worried about whether Mr. Damalowitz in his reign is going to handle it. I worry about what happens when Mr. Damalowitz leaves or when Mr. Ward leaves. What happens to the next people that, that have those positions? Okay. I think what, what this is trying to, to, to say to future legislators is that this is our intent. It is important that we have this level of review. It is both important and it is reasonable. And it should not be under the purview of someone's whim to say, no, I don't want to do that. Let's just give it to them when they sit down. It's that simple. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Simpson. Call the question. Most of the previous questions. I have Mr. Reinhardt and seen that then we'll do it. Uh, I, I just want to say that I, you know, we are a country of laws. I think this is an example where it's, it's the right thing is to have a law that says what our intent is, as opposed to the, the whim of of a, of a specific individual. Um, I agree. I want to compliment Gary on doing what he did last year, and, and it probably will continue as long as he sits in that seat in that role. But I think this is a case where we should have a law in place. If we were talking about uh, a matter of um, discrimination, would we say, well, discrimination, we'll just leave it up to, you know, the, the department head or, or uh, specific individuals within the government? No, we say we have to have laws that state what is right and what is wrong. I think this is another case, not as, you know, uh, not as important in many people's minds, perhaps, as, as discrimination laws or anti-discrimination laws, but I think it's a case where we should have it in place, um, as, as Richard says, as a statement of what the intent of this body is, what the intent of the county is to um, have transparency and to um, basically move forward with it in, as something that we will make sure continues. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. I want to uh, explain before we vote on the amendment, normally when there's an amendment to a local law, it'd be subject to an additional public hearing. Uh, the two attorneys from the minority and the majority conferred and concurred, ironically, that this is not a material change. <laughs> and it could be voted on tonight. So, we didn't rehearse that either. <laughs> the, uh, the, the first vote will be on the amendment, and we'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Mr. Best? No. Bullock? No. Bergdorf? Aye. Jackman? No. Blake? No. Lenahan? No. Abyssal? No. Krauss? No. Dawson? Demolowitz? No. Drake? Yes. Aether? No. Feeney? No. Pine? No. Grimm? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Hogan? No. Joyce? No. McCartney's? Yes. Lockhart? No. Morrell? Yes. Mayo? Yes. McKnight? No. McLean Lane? Yes. Bendick? Yes. Miller? No. O'Brien? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Signorach? No. Simpson? No. Smith? No. Stevens? Yes. Touche? No. Tunney? No. Ward? No. Willingham? No. Thank you.
Slide 23 and 13. Madam Sales. And resolution more roll call, please. I'm sorry, roll call for you. Apologize, roll call. So it's not quite accurate to say all this money is going to, uh, to 911 service because the state takes 60% of the money. Now, uh, what do they do with the money? Well, the governor has a proposal 
a $350 million proposal to light up bridges to synchronize to music in New York City. There's $420 million that's been spent on TV and film credits. All right, so uh, it's an unfair situation to go into. These, these taxes are sold as 911 service would in fact the state keeps 60% of the money. Now, what's different about this year is they're adding a new tax. The tax is on prepaid cards. Uh, right now, the landlines and cell phones are taxed, now prepaid cards. Now, who buys prepaid cards? Poor people. Because they can't afford the monthly plans, some of them are $170, $180, $250 $150 a month. So now we're taxing prepaid cards. So we're extending the tax, we're raising taxes, and, and knowing that it, uh, the biggest chunk of the money it doesn't go to 911 services. So I think there's a better way to fund 911 services, which of course everybody recognizes. So a vote for this resolution is a vote to raise taxes. Let's be clear about that. A vote for the resolution is a vote to raise taxes. The focus should be, I think, more on easing the tax burden, especially for people who can at least afford it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When it comes to the actual 911 surcharge money being redistributed to the county, we want to redo the site. We've never got our fair share of that. But it has nothing to do with this. This local law, this local law is implementing a 911 surcharge on track phones, uh, phones that are disposable, that currently aren't getting any uh, 911 surcharge on it, which are still using that they're called 911 on, on the fee. And as far as the phone, my brother buys a tax phone. Trust me, he can afford to get a program. And he buys it for convenience. He doesn't want to be tied up all these, uh, dealing with all these different uh, uh, cell phone companies. But more importantly, 911 uh, wouldn't operate without these fees. 911 is totally subsidized by the fees we get from, from the, the service users. Uh, so this, all this is doing, is plugging a hole on those track phones out there and everybody else that they're buying and putting the feeds on them. That's all it is. And uh, someday we can talk about what's going on up the hill and how we're not getting our fair share of number one money, but it ain't tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Berger. I'm uh, going to agreement with Mr. Brim tonight. Uh, surprise. Um, because I think it is about sending a signal up the hill. Everybody wants to be a leader in Albany County. We want to be on the cutting edge. Well, right now, counties around the state of New York are deciding whether or not to reimpose this tax on prepaid cards, which is predominantly, and I know people that have track phones, but they're the people they're generally the people who can't afford a $100 or $200 iPhone Verizon family plan. They're the senior citizen. They're the young kids starting out with his, their first phone. And what you have to realize is what we're really doing here is we're saying it's okay to double tax us. See, because in 2015, we gave the $185 million for 911, and you gave 75 million back, and then you took the other 110 million and you put it in the general fund so that you could give 420 million dollars to the film industry. And lo and behold, reading the post this morning, a music video for our bridges in New York City, 350 million dollars. Well, we got more money than brains if this is what we're proposing. But yet we have the audacity to come back here and put 3% on the littlest people in this county? I'm, I'm not going to be a part of that, and I'm going to vote no. I would assume that a no vote, just to clarify, would have a substantial hole in our budget we create a substantial hole in our budget, which if, my, my assumption is you have a plan other than raise taxes to close it all? 
Mr. Groom? Mr. Chair, well, you could start with the $1.7 million. I'll hold for suggestions. $1.7 million from the casino tax. It's sitting in the front right now. You could start with that right there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's a good start. Mr. Gamal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that $1.7 million may come in handy someday because if anyone saw the last control reports, our sales tax revenue is off. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping it comes back in the fourth quarter. So that uh, and you're going to be helping us and praying that we use that money so we don't raise property taxes. We keep this budget and keep delivering services that our, our, our people need. But I just want to make it very clear. 911 is funded by these fees. So you want to you want to call 911 and have no an answer? It's going to happen. I mean, if we don't fund it, if no one's there to pick up the phone. Uh, and this is just covering a, uh, a, 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 a hole, uh, a point in an area that was uh, that was uh, was missing. And it's state authorized. Speak to her. Said we can do it. Uh, that's where it all came from. You want you guys got beast with the governor? That's fine. I thought we'd be talking about that next year, but I guess we're going to start starting up already. Uh, you know, but that's fine. Uh, the simple fact is, if you want one to one to continue. You need to fund it, and it's simple as that. And the only way to fund it is through the fees for the people who use it. If you don't want it, if you want to keep 911 going, if you don't want to fight the fees, then it's going to go on the backs of all the taxpayers. For all that. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Feint. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to vote for this because I think 911 is important, and I think it would be a uh, bad uh, decision to put a big gap in our. 911 uh, funding mechanism. Although I do think it's worth um, the state should probably reconsider where we are getting, where we are funding our 911 from. Because the more I think about it, uh, wireless phones are something that um, a lot of people don't have landlines anymore. I don't have a landline. I think a lot of, especially low-income people, don't have landlines. They have only wireless phones, and I think it's a regressive tax to be taxing these wireless phones, which is really a necessity these days. Um, especially if you don't have a landline, as many people do. Um, and I have constituents, I know it's very, a lot of constituents who um, recharge, you know, use these track phones, they recharge the phones, I, you know, sometimes I call them, can't reach them, then a couple days later they get back and say, sorry, my phone was off, I didn't have $20 to go to the store and uh, recharge my phone. So, um, you know, I think another tax on top of these uh, phones are, it's not really a, uh, you know, the best idea, but um, I'm going to vote for it because I think it's more important that we need to make sure we're funding our uh, 911 service. And we, you know, but this is something that uh, I think should be looked into uh, either by us or likely make sense for the state to re, uh, re look at where this funding is coming from. Thank you, Mr. Fine. Mr. Dawson. Chairman, uh, can you clarify, you said that there will be a hole in our budget if we don't approve this? Well, what, my, what I'd like to my personal opinion is I don't think we're going to get to a point, I don't think this legislature would ever vote to take away our 911 service. And if it was underfunded, my personal opinion is that we would probably fund it somehow. And that would probably be property taxes. So, you're saying we didn't fund this properly in the budget, or we, we assumed that this was going to pass later in the year? I don't understand. This, this is something that was enacted in the state budget. It was part of the state budget process, which we know we always find out sometime after April 1st. So it's something separate from our own budget process. Well, so we've already funded for this year 911. No. This is, this is over and above. So this, this, would, be, this, would, be found, this would be found money, even if it goes to No, that's not true. The, the budget cycles are different. Our fiscal year is January 1st. You know the budget cycle. You're very familiar. So this this would be, we, we have to enact legislation to be able to receive the 911 funding from the state. It's, it's our money. It's Albany County money. And if we don't enact this legislation, we would not be eligible to receive that money or to enact the, the tax, the fee. The regular one that we're already paying. No, the old program is, is gone. The the, uh, the state did away with the old program. 
So this and is not, this, not just track phones, and it's, this is everything. This is everything. That's, that's a lot clearer. Yeah, this is a repeal of the old program and enacting the new state enabled program. Uh, I'm confused. I think a lot of people yeah, no, are going to be confused. So the state repealed the old program. We right. have to enact this at the county level in order to get the money we've already been getting in the past, plus some more. Plus they added the tricky uh, prepaid phones. Oh, that was added to, to the uh, state program. I'm sorry if that wasn't clarified. Any other questions? Okay, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Well, we'll all have 2017. Heston? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Burkhart? No. Chapman? Yes. Clay? Yeah. Lenahan? Yes. Commissio? Yes. Rouse? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Demolowitz? Yes. Drake? No. Nathan? No. Feeney? Yes. Pine? Yes. Grimm? No. Higgins? Yes. Hogan? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Bacacus? Yes. Lockhart? Yes. Moriello? No. Mayhaw? Yes. McKnight? Yes. McLean Lane? Yes. Mendick? No. Spiller? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Singer? Yes. Simpson? Yes. yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? No. Touche? Yes. Cunning? Yes. Ford? Yes. Willing? Yes. Like 36 passes. Book of Law passes 36. Book of Law Chief. Book of Law Chief 2017, the Book of Law County Law in New York, and then they get all the county charge to implement an anti competitive policy. Like refer that to the Board of Personnel Committees, please. Your motion to adjourn. Yes, sir. All those favor? Aye.